classes, but Petrie embraced them in his classes and went on to become a real champion of women at Auburn. And as you talk about, like, all the history of uh, uh, learning these interesting facts, um, for you guys, Mike and Mar Mark, like, what was the most interesting thing that you guys found out in doing all this research and in, in, in the history that you've been able to uncover to share with so many? I think what Mike's book does is helps you understand why football came to the South and what the motivation was for George Petrie for his students. It was a part of learning. It was a part of, you know, athletics and academics were together. Uh, and so I think to me it's just a reminder that, uh, that all of these things can go together. First football team was basically a PE class, wasn't it? Um, and this is a really interesting thing uh, that Petrie actually uh, went and pursued his doctorate at Johns Hopkins. And while he was at Johns Hopkins, he uh, had a classes with Woodrow Wilson, who later became president of the United States. <laughs> Woodrow Wilson was a, a, an early coach in, that coached in the Ivy League and so was very familiar with football. And I'm, I'm reasonably certain from the, from the evidence that Petrie really first got his enthusiasm about football from talking to Woodrow Wilson. And after Auburn played Georgia in that first game in 1892, uh, Petrie clipped a clipping about the Auburn victory over Georgia and, and mailed it to uh, Woodrow Wilson, uh, who later, of course, became president of the United States. Fascinating. It is. Get, get the book, Auburn <laughs> Man, The Life and Times of George Petrie. Um, and, and, and Dr. Wilson, give us the, uh, the information on, on the panel Tuesday again. Tuesday, 3 to 5 p.m. at Pebble Hill at the end of Magnolia Avenue. When football came to the south, the nature, imagination, and limits of a college sport, Mike Jernigan, Wayne Flint, and Andy Doyle. Thank you both for being here today. War Eagle. War, War Eagle. Eagle. Dr. Mark Wilson, author Mike Jernigan, joining us here on the Tiger Tailgate Show. Well, if you're looking for uh, an easy, seamless transition to Auburn University, consider Southern Union State Community College. Conveniently located only a few miles from Auburn, Southern Union offers classes that easily transfer to the university. Endless opportunities are right up the road. Stay with us. The Tiger Tailgate Show continues in a moment. Hey, Auburn fans. It's time to stretch those legs and reach for another bag of Golden Plate. Home or away, with family or friends, you know no game day is complete without your favorite snack. So enjoy Golden Plate or any of our other delicious snacks from the Utz family of brands and sit back for the rest of the game. Golden Plate and Auburn football, a winning team. Simple, Southern, goodness, Golden Plate. Celebrating 65 years as the official salty snack of the Auburn Tigers. Recruiting plays a major role in team building. Recruiting also plays an important role in protecting my home from termites with Cook's Pest Control and the Citricon system. Termites eat the bait in the Citricon stations, then eagerly recruit other termites to also feed on the bait, thus eliminating the termite colony. Discover how affordable it is to protect your home. Call Cook's Pest Control. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook's Pest Control. In 1925, Modelo began brewing beer for those who believe in better. A model beer, steeped in the tradition of tireless effort. A rich, Pilsner-style lager for those who wear their heart and heritage in their rolled-up sleeve. Since our first batch to every bottle raised today, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters what you're made of. Modelo Especial, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. When we say we're an everything school, we mean it. Since 1872, Auburn University graduates from the College of Agriculture and the Samuel Again College of Engineering have built on the land-grant mission to drive economic development, improve quality of life, promote social well-being, and enhance national security. Celebrating 150 years, come see why Auburn's College of Agriculture and Again College of Engineering continue to be pillars of the past, pioneers of the present, and foundations for the future. Visit auburn.edu. This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Kaneka Sausage. Well, on a day that feels a little bit like summer, or yeah. a lot like summer, hmm. let's talk about some of the highlights of summer. Voice of the Tigers, Andy Burcham, as you look back on the last couple of months, what were some of the, the, the top moments for you? Well, the, the, first, the first highlight of summer was Auburn's run to the World Series in Omaha, Nebraska, that you and I got to be a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, a magical season, the, 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 
the regional win here, the super regional win at Oregon State, and Auburn's win against Stanford in Omaha, Nebraska. That was just fun to be in Omaha. The month of July, and this is why I tell folks, I told Jan when we got married in 2004, there's one month I can guarantee you that I am not working, I'm not calling a game, yeah. and that's July. So July is our one month to travel every yeah. year. We took Joshua Bramblett uh, on his senior trip to New York City, saw a couple shows, had some good meals, and then basically since then, getting him ready to go to college mm -hmm. at Auburn and getting ready for this very moment yeah. right here. Yeah. That summer. Culminates here. You yeah. got it. So you're empty nesters again. We are. For yeah. the first time in three years, we sat on the first day, and I can understand what it's like for folks that are empty nesters for the first time. It was very surreal. Uh, what shows did you see in New York City? A brand new show called Six about the uh, wives of Henry VIII, and then we saw the classical Chicago. All right. Outstanding. Both were terrifically done. I was going to ask, can you do like a 20-second review no. of both? Oh, both were very, very good. Six is a brand new music. It's all female cast, including the band that is on the stage. You know, you do a little singing yourself. At, at times. Yeah. Is Not this, today. Is this one of them? No. I can't convince you to sing? That is a negatory. We got 10 seconds left. That's a hard no. Okay. Okay. Two more minutes and more special guests. Former <laughs> Auburn quarterback Randy Campbell next. This is the Auburn Sports Network. The Auburn Football Review is your source for highlights, locker room interviews, special features, and more. For decades, the Auburn Football Review has been appointment viewing for Auburn fans throughout the Southeast. Join Andy Burcham each week as he visits with head coach Brian Harson to get his immediate take on the game. Check your local listings or AuburnTigers.com for when and how to watch the Auburn Football Review. Saturdays in the South mean football and outdoor projects. And like an All-American lineup, nothing works harder or better than quality John Deere equipment. So get to Sun South, where it's more affordable than ever to own the best equipment available. Plus, discover our new selection of John Deere compact construction equipment, perfect for larger projects. Think Sun South, with 21 locations throughout the Southeast, or shop online at sunsouth.com. Sun South, proud to be the preferred tractor of the Auburn Tigers. Putting together a winning drive Third and long from the shotgun. takes focus, determination, There's the snap, dropping back. and that powerful form of energy Scrabbles to his right, looking downfield, called belief. Launches it toward the end zone. That belief in a team, in a community of fans, in each other. Touchdown! That powerful energy connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. Welcome to the land of opportunity, Alabama. It's a place where the jobs are plentiful with great pay, great benefits, and even greater opportunities to show what you can do. Whether you want to build the next great tech product, discover the next biotech breakthrough, or design rockets that touch new parts of space, Alabama is where your career can take off. Incredible opportunities in the fields of tomorrow, aerospace, bioscience, automotive, and IT. They're all waiting for you today in Alabama. Learn more at madeinalabama.com. And welcome back on the Tiger Tailgate Show. Hey, register your child ages 5 to 12 for the Auburn Tigers Kickoff Kid Contest from Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. Winners get to retrieve the kicking tee at Jordan-Hare Stadium, plus they receive uh, four game tickets, VIP hospitality pregame, sideline access, a custom T-shirt, and video board recognition. A really neat contest. Enter now at auburnkickoffkid.com. That's auburnkickoffkid.com. Dot com. Brad Law joined by Stan White, Jason Campbell. It's an all-quarterback uh, table right, right over here. Is uh, We're joined now by Randy Campbell, uh, an SEC champion, quarterback team captain of that 83 team, uh, among many other accolades. Randy, thanks for being with us, War Eagle. Hey, glad to be here. I, I think I would be third string at this group unless you play quarterback too. I might be fourth string. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, out of this group, I'm, I'm, I'm down on the pride list. Pride of the Piedmont Bulldogs. <laughs> yeah. Well, people used to think I was Randy's cousin. That's right. First right. Here, you know, so. Well, I, I could see it. I could yeah. see the resemblance. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Randy, what, what an exciting time now. As we get started with, with a new season and, and T.J. Finley is, is set to take the reins at quarterback, take us back to your first start um, or, or the first game of a new season getting ready as a starting quarterback. Wow. You know, that's uh... – 
I'm not sure at this age if I can remember back that far. No, <laughs> no 1982, I, we opened up, I believe, with Wake Forest uh, that year. And, you know, to me, your first start, you got, you know, so much adrenaline going. And I don't remember a lot of about individual plays in the game. And uh, it's funny, the more you play, the slower the game gets. And my senior year, I can tell you 30 plays of every game I played in. But uh, we did win that first game. I, I think we won our first three that year, and then we ran into Nebraska. Um, they were pretty good back then. Yeah. Back, back then, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, I remember watching Randy play. Of course, we've had him on our show in the past. And, and, and one of the – one of the and, and I won't make you relive the story because you've told it probably 10,000 times over your time. But I do remember going into the Tangerine Bowl back when you guys played against a guy named Doug Flutie, uh, who was, I believe, a sophomore or junior back then yeah. and, and uh, finally wound up winning the Heisman Trophy. But, but it was that last play to get the touchdown to, uh, to Bo. I was in that end zone, that left corner of the end zone that you pitched it in, and I'm like going, coaches are going to get on to him. They're going to rag him out because of that bad pitch. Well, <laughs> tell why you made that pitch. Yeah, that's, that's a great story. <laughs> you know, that's probably one of the most acrobatic things I've seen Bo do in football. I've seen a lot of his exploits in baseball, but we had third and goal from around the 10-yard line, and the play came in, and it was an option to the left where Bo was going to be the pitch man, and I was either going to keep it or pitch it. So it was a fake to the fullback, and right before we were going to snap the ball, timeout was called. I go to the sideline, and Coach, Coach Dye was saying, Randy, I don't care what they do. You pitch it to Bo. Because he'd seen me run. You know, I averaged two yards of carry, and we're on the 10. And uh, sure enough, the ball was snapped. And before I could even finish my fake to the fullback, the defensive end had turned his back to me and was running toward Bo. And he was 6'4". You know, so I pitched the ball left-handed over the back of his helmet which made the ball be behind Bo, but he's such a great athlete. He just reached back with one hand, pulled it in, and then ran over three Boston College defenders and scored a <laughs> touchdown. So I, I've i always told people that Coach Dye was a great defensive coach, but he's probably the best <laughs> offensive mind I've ever known because he knew that the Jimmys and Joes were more important than the X's and O's. Get it to the guy that can put it in the end zone. Well, speaking of Coach Dye, uh, Randy, talk about the, uh, the premiere y'all went to last night and the guys that was there and – and everything that they had with uh, for Coach Dye. It was it was fantastic. Uh, it's called Mighty, and it's about Coach Dye's life. It's I guess it's almost a two-hour, mm -hmm. you know, documentary, and um, you learn a lot of things about Coach Dye's life outside of football that you really didn't know before, <laughs> and you learn a whole lot more about his family. Uh, but you know, the the main thing that everybody really took away from that is his impact on Auburn University. Mm -hmm. You know, he played at Georgia. He coached for Bear Bryant at Alabama. And, but he literally almost redefined the Auburn man. Yep. And he became an Auburn man so fast and stayed here for, gosh, I guess he was here over 40 years of his life. But it's a wonderful film, and I don't know how they're going to release it to the public, but I'm sure they will do that and everybody will get a chance to watch it. And I encourage you to watch it. It's fantastic. And one, one thing about Coach Dye, I want to tag on that, and maybe you can answer this. I, I think this is correct. He, he retired from coaching at like 51 years old, <laughs> yeah, which I, is, I mean, <laughs> imagine that. I mean, it, 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 that's very, very young. Yeah. And and I, I think I'm correct with this. Somebody may have to correct me on it, but I think he when he retired from Auburn, it was at 51 years old. Never went out again. I'm sure he probably had some desire to, but you know what? He just loved Auburn, and, and, and of course, Auburn loved him, took care of him, but but at 51 years old, he was done coaching. And he could have went and coached somewhere else. Yeah, he, when he got here, he was 41. And, um, yeah, he, he was very young. I guess, he, you know, he really loved Auburn uh, so much that he did, I don't guess another job would have been attractive to him. But there was a rumor about two years after uh, he retired that he was going to go to Georgia. And I woke up in a cold sweat. I was trying to figure out how am I going to tell Nancy I'm going back into coaching. <laughs> 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 so – because I would have done it. You know, if he had called and said, hey, Randy, I'm going to Georgia. I need a quarterback coach. I'm in. We, we know now, Randy, that the legacy of Pat Dye. Talk a little bit about the culture of those, like, 82, 83 teams when he was in year two, year three as, as the head coach here. And he was in the process of building the culture that, that he wanted here. Yeah, you know, the first meeting we ever had with Coach Dye, he came in, and part of what he said was, men, I've won a championship at every level, high school, college and in the pros in the Canadian League and he said we're going to win championships here and the next thing he said was and we won't fear Alabama and he had coached there nine years 
And you know what? About 60% of the team believed him, and the other 40% got run off. Mm. And that's how he started building that culture. And he, he mentioned this, or somebody did in the film last night, but Coach Dyer really pushed you so far beyond your limits physically, mentally, emotionally that you thought you could go. And the difference in doing that is the last six minutes of a game. And, you know, until we learned how to push through that, you couldn't finish a game in a, in a big, important game that was close. Yeah. And I think Coach Dye's toughness is just, you know, unmatched. And Randy, talking about, uh, you know, just Lionel James. You know, yeah. everyone talks about Bo, and, you know, we lost Lionel, you know, a legend this summer. Talk about your greatest memory of Lionel. Wow. My, Lionel, <laughs> probably on the football field, Lionel was a great, great person. He and I were good friends, very close. Um, we were seniors the same year, but we played Georgia in 82 mm -hmm. and they were undefeated and we were having a good season um, And we were on I think we were on our own 14 yard line and we called an option play to the right yep. and I missed the read <laughs> so I was supposed to hand the ball to Tommy Agee uh -huh. and when I pulled it out the guy jumped out and before I could think about it I pitched it to Lionel <laughs> He made one move and went 86 and I got a negative. I got a minus in the play. But, so the whole point is Lionel could take a bad play yeah. and turn it into something magical. He really could. Randy, in the in the minute or less that we have with you, talk about kind of what, what you're doing now. You've been involved, too, in a couple of groups that are dedicated to uh, or involved in legacy uh, giving and, and – um, uh, people really making a lasting difference. You can't see the facilities and everything that's going on around campus without people making these planned gifts and, and giving to, to Auburn University. That's right. I've been a financial advisor for 30 years. You know, I coach for Coach Dye here. I coach this man. I ran, uh, I ran him out of coaching. Last year, <laughs> I ran him out of coaching. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, 1992, so 1993, I became a financial advisor. And, you know, I left Auburn in 83 after my senior year. I came back in 92. I left in 92, but I really never left. Yeah. And the reason I say that is, um, you know, the first big capital campaign we had, I was a co-chair in the Birmingham region, uh, involved in a lot of planned gifts um, toward the capital campaign. And then for the last eight years, I've been on Auburn's foundation board. And the main role that I fill there is I'm on the investment committee that oversees the investment of $1.1 billion uh, of money that are, are gifts that, you know, these great benefactors have given to Auburn University. Really good stuff. We appreciate you taking some time and, and storytelling a little bit with us today. War Eagle. Thank you, War Eagle. Tiger yes, quarterback, great Randy Campbell, joining us here on the Tiger Tailgate Show. Stay tuned. We'll have our game picks this week coming up in just a few minutes. This is the Auburn Sports, or rather the Tiger Tailgate Show, continues in a moment. Midway through the second quarter of the 2013 season opener, Auburn and Washington State scored four touchdowns in less than two minutes with Trey Mason and Corey Grant answering each Cougar score for an Auburn Bank championship moment after this. We're live from Auburn Bank signing day. Angela scanning the closing documents. Looks like the competitive rate her Auburn Bank mortgage lender promised. She gets the pen, clicks it once, twice, spin move, and we have a signature. Angela Green is a first time homeowner. With competitive rates, online applications, and hands-on mortgage lenders, the wins just feel bigger. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. NMLS number 403461. End over end to Mason at the goal line. Straight at the 5, straight ahead, 10, 15, 20. Gets outside, 25, 30, 35, 40, to midfield, down the near sideline, at the 35, 25, 20. He's going to go! Touchdown! The 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown was Mason's second of his career after returning one 97 yards in 2011 season opener against Utah State. It was the sixth consecutive season that Auburn had returned a kickoff for a touchdown, the third longest active streak in the nation at the time. Corey Grant in the backfield. He'll take the ball out of the hands of Marshall and get to the corner. 40, 45, 50. There goes Grant. 40, 35, 30. Far sideline. 20, 15, 10, 5. Gone! 75 yards, touchdown, Auburn! Grant's 75-yard touchdown was the first and longest of his career. The Tigers would defeat Washington State 31-24 to open the 2013 campaign. This was a championship moment presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you.
This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Kaneka Sausage. Plenty of action across college football. We'll update the Yellowwood scoreboard again in games involving SEC teams over in Atlanta, Georgia, trying to put it away early. Five minutes to go in the first half. The third-ranked Bulldogs lead number 11, Oregon, 21 to nothing. Stetson Bennett, 12 for 14 through the air. He's got a rushing touchdown as well. Georgia's defense has picked off Bo Nix a couple of times, and Oregon trying to drive. They're in the red zone, but... Trailing right now, the Bulldogs 21 to nothing inside of five minutes to go in the first half. Other scores involving SEC teams, number 21, Ole Miss, has a touchdown on the board against Troy. It's 7 to nothing Rebels. They're early in the second quarter over in Oxford. Midway through the second quarter, it's a run fest in Fayetteville. 19th ranked Arkansas, number 23, Cincinnati. They're slogging it out on the ground, and the Razorbacks lead the Bearcats 7 to nothing. They're still in a weather delay in College Station. Number six, Texas A&M leads Sam Houston 17 to nothing at the half, and they have not been able to start that second half of play just yet. Top 25 games outside the SEC. Number nine, Oklahoma leads UTEP 21 to 10 midway through the second quarter in Norman. The Miners have scored 10 unanswered to get up off the deck in that matchup. Number 16, Miami leads Bethune-Cookman 28 to 3 midway through the second quarter there in Mario, Mario Cristobal's first game as the coach of the Hurricanes. It is number 24, Houston, tied with Texas San Antonio, seven apiece, nine and a half minutes to go in the first half in that matchup. Final scores today, number eight, Michigan took care of Colorado State, 51 to seven, and NC State, 13th ranked uh, Wolfpack, escaped with a 21-20 win at East Carolina. Two minutes from now, our guys pick their games, our game picks in two minutes. This is the Auburn Sports Network. In football, it's important to call the right play. In life, it can be even more important to make the right call, especially regarding termite protection. To protect my home, I called Cook's Pest Control and got the Centricon system. You don't have to live with termites. For a free quote, make the right call. Cook's Pest Control and the Centricon system. Looky, looky, looky. The official motions for quiet. That's Ed from Auburn Bank looking over another commercial loan application. He's assessing the capital needs of the small business. Long-term local relationships are his specialty. The client's liking it. They're really liking it. They love it. Exactly the hands-on experience they were looking for. Another local business with the capital they need for a big win. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC. Take it to the house this football season with the Alabama Manufactured Housing Association and the Auburn Tigers. If Auburn returns its first received kickoff in the second half for a touchdown at one of its home SEC games, one lucky fan will win a $75,000 down payment towards the purchase of a manufactured home from an authorized AMHA dealer. Don't miss your chance to take it to the house this season and win a beautiful manufactured home. Register today at auburntigers.com slash take it to the house. Certain terms and conditions may apply. For a complete set of contest rules, visit auburntigers.com slash take it to the house. Thank you, Auburn, for over 40 years of business. Since day one at Guthrie's, we've been serving up the best golden fried chicken fingers, hand-chopped coleslaw, crinkle-cut fries, and our signature Guthrie sauce. Often imitated, never duplicated. We have four Auburn locations to serve you, including South College and our downtown location off East Glen Avenue, which is open until 3 a.m. every night. Fresh, hot, and fast. That's the Guthrie's promise. To find the nearest Guthrie's to you, visit guthrieschicken.com. And we are back on the Tiger Tailgate Show outside of Jordan-Hare Stadium across from Gate 7 where the students are lined up and the line has made its way back. It's almost now encroaching on the stage and people are fired up. The student gates will be opening uh, soon. In fact, they may be opening right now. The plan was to open them a little bit earlier than, uh, than in the past. And so I think very soon those students are going to start filing into Jordan-Hare Stadium. Folks are also heading to Tiger Walk right now. It's a good point. Yeah. Yep, the Tiger Walk crowd. And there were people lined up for Tiger Walk when we came over from the arena yes. today. So, again, the excitement about this team and this game is uh, really through the roof as we kick off another season. All right, guys, it's time for our Guthrie's game picks. Who won last year? 
Stan won last year. Really? Yes. That's hard to believe. It, you know what? I don't know if he actually won or not, right, but, they, but Paul's not here to complain, so I'll just say Stan won. <laughs> I don't know. I'm on and, Paul's Andy, side. Andy, you very surprised by that. I do, yes. I, okay. I think that because I think there was a, a I wasn't point a that he wasn't leading. No. Like, and I think Paul, it was his to lose. So I don't think – I'm not going to let you do that to him, Brad. <laughs> the only reason y'all let, let him get away with it is because there is no wager. That's true. This is yeah. for entertainment <laughs> yes. purposes yeah. only. Yeah. And, and it's hard to win when you got people that keep up with the score. Yeah. He keeps up with the I score don't keep pre -game. Up with the score. I'm saying the pregame <laughs> stuff, and he always wins. Well, like, uh, and then three today. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then now it's like Brad's like, oh, yeah, Stan probably won. Right, I'm like, well, here's well. the deal. Who keeps the score with that? Brad, you keep the score with the uh, edits. So there we are. Nope. Now we have that all hey, sorry, squared away. Just work harder. Andy's just <laughs> listen. Andy's just thrilled that he's a I part get, of the. I get to be a part of it this year. Yeah, you've been an onlooker. That's right. For the for the home games on the road, I was yeah. in. Right. And then I was never a part of it in the end because yeah. I didn't have enough games. Right. He wants to go by percentage. Let's go. Like so the year go. they had a COVID year, it was Let like you, a six and two team made this national championship. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the picks here. We have four games to talk about. The first is tonight at 6 o'clock Central in Gainesville. Number seven, Utah, going in to take on the Gators. Billy Napier, first game as the Florida head coach. Guys, what do we think about this? Let's start with Stan, the reigning champion. I'm going underdog right out of the gates. I'm really? going with Billy Napier in his first year with the upset over the Utes. Traveling down here, this is the worst time of the year to come down. If you're from Utah with a dry heat, yeah. come down here with this 100% humidity, especially in Gainesville. I like Florida in a nail biter. But now Utah practices with elevation. It's not humidity, but but well, it is elevation. Not very elevated in Florida. But Stan said dry, dry. <laughs> it's very well, wet that. heat. It's yeah. very. Yeah, I could say All Stan right. said dry heat. Dry heat is out west. Yeah. Know, yeah. yeah so Utah is out west. Yeah. yeah. We're coming to Florida. West of the Mississippi, Jay Swamp for the heat. Geography <laughs> and sports in this segment. Ronnie, what do you think? You know what? I'm. I'm we're going to go ahead and get it started. I'm going to go opposite of Stan. There you I, go. I, really? Utah with the elevation, but you talk about 7 <laughs> o'clock game. It's a lot different. Like, okay. And so the heat may not be as much of an issue yeah. at that time of day. Um, I mean, it's still going to be humid. So, yes, it is. Um, but I like Utah. Like, it's just their style of football, not a lot yeah. of changes. Who's going to play quarterback for Florida? It's yeah. a new situation, a lot of changes. We I got like a potential Utah. top like five him. pick I've seen uh, with their quarterback. Yeah, Richardson. Yeah. Jason, what do you think? Potential gets you fired. That's <laughs> the rule of the NFL. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go with Stan on this one. I'm going to go Florida in the swamp, you know, crowd noise, get behind Billy Napier's first game. And I just think they're, they're going to come out and play hard tonight, and I think they get this one in upset. Andy, what do you think? Gators. All right, if you're going to be a part of this segment, oh we need so longer gotta, answers gotta, yeah. than that. we got to have more than that. Gators, that's it. All right, let's try again. <laughs> Boise State is at Oregon State, a 9.30 Central time start in Corvallis, the location for this one. Oregon State actually a slim favorite at home. What do you think, uh, Broncos or Beavs, Andy? Beavers, I'll take Oregon State to win this one at home. All right. Well, that was a longer – that was good. No, no reasoning, though. No reasoning, but a longer answer. Hey, let's let's let him, it's you called, know, it's called, it's called his results. <laughs> All right. Ease his way into Moving it. on. Jason. Yeah, both teams don't have to worry about the dry heat. You know, they're out west and it's a <laughs> night are. game. They're so. out west, both of them. Yeah, I'm going I'm to stick with Oregon State at home. We saw that stadium when we were out there for the, uh, yes, the, the Super Regional. Stan, what do you think? You know, uh, I'll go Boise State. I like the colors. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting on me for a short yeah. answer. Hey, orange, Stan's orange, going with the that's colors. Orange today. and blue, orange and blue. That's some Jason. They're going to pick up a piece of blue turf and bring it with them to, yeah. to, to Corvallis. That's, Why not? That's some smooth logic right there. <laughs> Ronnie, what do you think? Yeah. If they were in Boise State, then I'd like the colors because the feel. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go with the home team on this one. I'm going to go with Oregon State. So three for Oregon State there. All right. Now, Florida State takes on LSU. In New Orleans, this game is tomorrow. LSU slim favorite uh, in their home state. Brian Kelly's debut as the head coach of the Bayou Bengals. Seminoles or Tigers? Ronnie, we'll start with you this time. I'm going with the other Tigers. I mean, they're essentially a home game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think one thing, they've been able to get behind and get motivated behind Coach. Uh, he's done some things this offseason, a little bit of dancing, so I'm sure that you know, he's entertained those guys. They'll, they'll be a little motivated. First game, there'll be excitement. I like LSU. In, in front of his LSU family. Andy, what do you think about this? <laughs> this is a tough one for me, but uh, I, I like the fact that it's in New Orleans. and mm -hmm. this, the, it, They can say it's a neutral site game. It's this not. game in Atlanta isn't a neutral site game either for Georgia, is no. it? I'll take LSU to win this one. Stan. Uh, I, I agree. I think LSU, Brian Kelly, 
you know, he did good, very good things at Notre Dame, um, and he was always in the playoff hunt, yeah. if not in the playoff. Never really did a whole lot when he got there, but they were well coached. And, uh, I, I, you know, nobody really looks at him as being a top five, top ten coach, but he's always done pretty well. And I, including me, you yeah. never look at, okay, who's well, a top five coach? You never include him in there, but he's always in there. So I, I like, I, I think, I think LSU will be better coached. Yeah. And so I like LSU. Plenty of talent he there. He will have sure. better players at LSU yeah. to work with. Better coaches, better players. That yeah. kind of equals results. Jason. Yeah, I like LSU week. in this one. You know, you get our fans a good 10 hours to get boozed up before they get ready to go into the Superdome. <laughs> they don't even need that long. Get the crowd behind them. So. <laughs> All right. Our last game, we have about 45 seconds here, so we'll go quickly. Number four, Clemson takes on Georgia Tech, Mercedes-Benz Stadium on Monday. Any chance the Jackets get the upset here in their home city? No. Negative. No. Zero. Zero. There's a zero, chance. Zero, zero, zero. Are you going to take them? If Clemson don't show up, I, there's no <laughs> chance of that. So. All right. Well, so much for that then. <laughs> Clean sweep. Everybody picks Clemson. We do have some variances here, so we will update the official standings. We'll put Jacob Hillman in charge of that uh, next week. Guthrie's thanks the Auburn family for over 40 years of business since day one. Fresh, hot, and fast has always been the Guthrie's promise. Find the nearest Guthrie's to you. Visit Guthrie'sChicken.com. Stay with us. The Tiger Tailgate Show continues in a moment. Thank you, Auburn, for over 40 years of business. Since day one at Guthrie's, we've been serving up the best golden fried chicken fingers, hand-chopped coleslaw, crinkle-cut fries, and our signature Guthrie sauce. Often imitated, never duplicated. We have four Auburn locations to serve you, including South College and our downtown location off East Glen Avenue, which is open until 3 a.m. every night. Fresh, hot, and fast. That's the Guthrie's promise. To find the nearest Guthrie's to you, visit Guthrie'sChicken.com. Toyota presents How Far Did They Drive? In 2010's season opener against Arkansas State, Auburn led the Red Wolves 28-16 with one more chance to add to the lead before halftime. Just two plays into the drive, Cam Newton was off to the races. The handoff, runs the draw. Newton 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Down to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. Nobody's going to catch him. To the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Auburn! 72 yards for Cameron Newton on the simple quarterback draw. A two-play drive covered 69 yards in 45 seconds. It was Newton's second rushing touchdown of the game and just a glimpse of what was to come. Auburn went on to win 52-26 and begin its 2010 season 1-0. Visit your local Toyota dealer or go to toyota.com today. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. And we're back with breaking news. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. Make sure to oh, Jim. Ooh, yes, this tastes like the best Coke ever to me. We're on the air. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, this is Coach Brian Harson. They say Coke Zero Sugar is refreshingly delicious. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. War Eagle. This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Koneka Sausage. All right, it is time for everybody's favorite contest. It is the StubHub Move of the Game. And if our radio audience will indulge us a minute, this is just for those on site here in front of the stage here at the east side of Jordan-Hare Stadium. Here's how the StubHub Move of the Game works. If you have upper deck seats and you'd like to move into the lower bowl and you're wearing Auburn gear, and you can go into the stadium here in the next few minutes, and don't mind doing that. Just come to the uh, the, the stage here, and uh, Julia has the StubHub sign. Just see her. There we go. We may, in fact, already have a winner. Show her the upper deck tickets. Make sure that you qualify. You agree to go on in, and uh, you could be the winner of the StubHub move of the game. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of Auburn Athletics. By the way, you got to check out StubHub here in a couple of weeks when uh, – uh, Penn State is in town. We understand that is a sellout. You're going to want to be at that game. you got to check out StubHub to do it. we got to keep it going. Okay, so we do not have a winner yet in the StubHub move of the game. Again, the requirements are you got to have upper deck seats. You're wearing Auburn gear, so we know you're an Auburn fan. And uh, you don't mind going on into the stadium. Be the first one to meet that criteria. And uh, come see Julia, who has the StubHub sign. We could have a winner. Let's see. 
We thought we did last time, though, and, uh, and we didn't, so we'll find out. Uh, we do this every home game. We select a StubHub move of the game winner, and so if you don't win this time, come back next time. Also want to remind you about game programs, digital game programs for every game this year, home and away. This, this applies to everybody, again, radio audience, YouTube, Facebook office uh, audience. Uh, get your Auburn football yearbook for $10. That's the hard copy. Uh, but digital game programs for each game are available online at AuburnTigers.com. Now stay with us. This is the Auburn Sports Network. Welcome to the land of opportunity, Alabama. It's a place where the jobs are plentiful with great pay, great benefits, and even greater opportunities to show what you can do. Whether you want to build the next great tech product, discover the next biotech breakthrough, or design rockets that touch new parts of space, Alabama is where your career can take off. Incredible opportunities in the fields of tomorrow, aerospace, bioscience, automotive, and IT. They're all waiting for you today in Alabama. Learn more at madeinalabama.com. Hillman here with this week in Auburn Athletics. Number 11, Auburn Soccer, battled to a 0-0 tie against number 21, West Virginia, on Thursday. Courtesy of WEGL 91.1 FM, head coach Karen Hoppe recaps the results in a top 25 matchup. I thought we played miles better than we did at Wake Forest. I mean, our offense was really clicking. We were combining great. We created a ton of opportunities. You know, credit to West Virginia's goalkeeper. She was brilliant, robbed us of a couple. Um, and then we just lacked a little bit of composure on a couple good looks. But it's coming. You know, we just got to continue to connect offensively the way we did today and then just got to finish the opportunities that we have. The Tigers are back in action tomorrow at noon central against Army at the Auburn Soccer Complex. Auburn volleyball is off to a 4-0 start after a sweep of Alabama State on Wednesday. The Tigers return to Neville Arena on Tuesday at 7 central against Alabama A&M. To view full schedules and more information, visit AuburnTigers.com. For this week in Auburn Athletics, I'm Jacob Hillman. War Eagle. In 1925, Modelo began brewing beer for those who believe in better. A model beer steeped in the tradition of tireless effort. A rich Pilsner-style lager for those who wear their heart and heritage in their rolled-up sleeve. Since our first batch to every bottle raised today, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters what you're made of. Modelo Especial, food for those with a fighting spirit. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Golly, outside. Time for another hour of the Tiger Tailgate Show presented by Koneka Sausage. Koneka Sausage is the official sausage and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Straight ahead, more special guest and matchup analysis as we move closer to kickoff. Here's Brad Law to start another hour of the Tiger Tailgate Show. Yep, we are live outside of Jordan-Hare Stadium. It is the uh, Tiger Tailgate Show, and what an hour this is going to be. A spectacular day for football, spectacular day to open up a new season, and uh, we have some spectacular guests, so that's fitting. Uh, joining us, the voice of the Tigers, Andy Burcham, Stan White, Jason Campbell, and Rashawn Frost, a former Auburn defensive lineman, is on the stage as well. He's got his Auburn hat on. <laughs> that's all we're talking about first. <laughs> As we say, War Eagle, and welcome to the show, Rashawn. War Eagle, it's good to be back home. Um, let's go ahead and, and address <laughs> yeah, it. Right let's talk to the elephant Those that are watching, <laughs> explain. Tell everybody why you're wearing a Mercer football shirt. I am wearing a Mercer football shirt. My, my son, my oldest son, is a freshman corner on the Mercer football team. Yeah. So uh, the hardest part for the day was what I was going to wear, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I wanted to support him, support his teammates, and, and just that great opportunity for them to come to Auburn, get a good Auburn welcome, and, and just be in this atmosphere for their season open and everything else has been a heck of an environment. Chet Williams, first year at Auburn was 99. That was your last season. Mm -hmm. I talked to Chet earlier, said, hey, we're going to have Rashawn on. He was really happy that you were going to be back <laughs> on campus. Talk about his role in what you do to this very day. Okay, so... Chet, Chet's role is just phenomenal in terms of just mentoring and developing guys in terms of their, just the total aspect of a person. You know, I used to tell people all the time, in, when you're a part of a football team, you have an offensive coordinator, you got a defensive coordinator, you got a special teams coordinator, but you don't have a life coordinator special, or a spiritual coordinator. So, like, your 40 time can't help you <laughs> when 
your mother passes away. Your bench press cannot help you when your parents are going through a divorce. Just the, 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 the everyday issues of life that all of us go through, have gone through, or will go through. And Chet was that guy that was there for all of us, to mentor us, to help develop us. And so when my journey was, when I got left Auburn, I became a grad assistant, got into coaching, and coached all over the place. And when it was time for me to transition out of coaching, um, I went to work at the Citadel. And affectionately, as, as their guy, this, as the life coach for the Citadel football team for about six years, I would refer to myself as the Chet Williams of the Citadel. <laughs> So, yeah. hey, what, about this? I was going to say, what what is it about defensive linemen? You know, Wayne Dickens yep. is at Western Kentucky doing that. <laughs> Mike Blanc is yep. the, the team chaplain at Miami. Absolutely. What is it about D linemen? Who, who, we are intense. Yeah. We're intense. <laughs> and, and, and you want intense people with you when things go hard. That sounds That's good, good to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you also <laughs> want to argue with it? Yeah, you no. also got uh, David Rocker, who's uh, yep. That's right. another guy yeah. who's a pastor yep. in Atlanta. So. Auburn's a special place, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a yeah. fundamental place. I, I became a man here. Yeah. Yeah. And I grew I grew up immensely here. So Talk about this, though. Your son is going to dress out at corner, and you play defense. Are you more nervous watching your son, or are you more nervous getting ready to play a game? I'm more nervous watching him. I, I'm – I'm more nervous watching him. Because the thing is, is like as a D lineman, if I made a mistake, yeah. there, there are people who can cover it. With my son, if he makes a mistake on that island, everybody knows it. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm probably more nervous as a dad because I just want to see him do well and, and stuff like that. Well, Rashawn, talk about you, you were telling us off the air um, about his journey to playing in college, mm -hmm. and you gave him some simple advice right. uh, because he played a different position in right. high school, and his name is Caleb Frost. Talk about the discussions you had with him because obviously he knew dad played in college right. and, and he wanted to play in college, and take us there. Right. Well, you know, Caleb was a big Auburn fan, wanted to play to Auburn, but, you know, the school that he went to, was they ran a triple option offense. And so his freshman year, he's a wide receiver in a triple option offense. His sophomore year, he's a wide receiver in a triple option offense. And I said, look, son, let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> I'm just, just keep it honest with you. If you want to play college football, you better move the defensive back. <laughs> and, you know, at that time he was – and I, and I said, I said, at that time he was 5'10". I said, look, a 5'10 wide receiver, you're a dime a dozen. Hmm. But you have an, an opportunity as a corner. Well, you know, time kept happening. He got a little bit taller. He's now 6'1". Uh, and, and he only played two years a corner, and now he is playing D1 football. And so he still got a long ways to go. Uh, he still got a – eat more and get bigger and, and understand the game, but it's, it's that journey. I'm just glad you listened. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rashawn, we listened to Jason yesterday at the Friday football luncheon, and he talked about how close that 2004 team was, and they had meetings on Friday nights where they, where they got to know each other, and, and it had nothing to do with, with football. Obviously, the Auburn experience was a transformative one for, for you. Would you talk a little more about that, some of the guys that you played with and the closeness that you right. have with some of those guys today? You know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than, than Jason. I, 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 my, my years were 96 and 99, and, you know, playing with guys like Takeo Spikes and, and guys like Damian Craig as our starting quarterback, who was just an absolute leader. Uh, you had guys like Fred Beasley. You had uh, Martavius Houston. You had, you had guys that – that would show up and, and, and just go to work. Uh, Jimmy Brumbaugh, yeah. D-line coach, uh, just a, a just solid guys that were just about putting in work. And so uh, it was it was great to get a chance to be around these guys. But I think you're right. The, the thing that you find out about with special teams is there's a unity and a closeness that transcends their the locker room in terms of just being teammates. Uh, and, and, and when you get that together, that's when you get to see something special. Rashawn, where are you today? Give us an update. Well, I, I, I get to struggle by living in Charleston, South Carolina. So, you know, I, so it's a hard job, but somebody's got to do it. Auburn there. of South Carolina, right? Yeah, man, I'm telling you, I don't know which one's God's country. I'm like, I leave God's country to go to God's country. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm loving it. So, uh, But I live in Charleston, South Carolina. After my time at the Citadel and, and coaching at Charleston Southern, decided to make that home. Um, I actually got out of athletics and planted a church, which – I don't know if that's brave or stupid, but trying to plant a church during a pandemic, post-pandemic and stuff like that in Charleston area. And so um, I, I, tell, I take the same philosophy about the locker room and coaching. So I, I take football with me everywhere I go. And I'm also working as, a, as, an, as a, an, an adjunct professor at Charleston Southern as well. So I get a chance to be around college students and still get a chance to 
live live uh, the college experience <laughs> all these years afterwards. It's obedient. That's what it is, and good for you to do it. Uh, <laughs> Smart man. All right, I, I got to ask you, what? Uh, give us a scouting report on on the Mercer team that we'll see out there today. Well, I'll tell you this: they 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 are a solid football team with a good culture. Uh, they the coach, Coach Chronic, is is doing a really good job just developing those guys, kids, getting them together in unity, and you're going to get their A game. I think that's the one thing we have recognized. I know it's easy to say, uh, you know, Auburn, Auburn looking at Mercer, and, and sometimes the, the tendency is to look past Mercer and, and past those programs, but they're going to get those guys' best game because you don't, they don't get this opportunity that often. And I've, I've coached in the perspective at Mercer, and, and every once in a while, if you catch, if you get, catch them slipping, um, it, could be a, it could be a long day. Uh, if, if Auburn does what they're supposed to do, we're singing the fight song at the end of the game yeah. and, and, and celebrating the end of the day. But if you're caught slipping, we'll be, whoo, and you're wondering, well, what's next? Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing is the only thing that matters is today. This game, this moment. Don't look past. Don't look forward. Just look at this moment. Take care of business today, and the outcome will take care of itself. But Mercer is a good football team. They've got a lot of energy. Uh, they came off a really good win against Moorhead State. They, they, they felt really good. And, and here's one thing I would share with you that, they, they, they won that game 63 to 13, mm -hmm. and they were tracking lows. Those guys were tracking lows. And in that defense, they counted 32 lows on that defense mm. on a 63-13 win. So that tells you the type of mentality that they're, that they're pressing for that program yeah. because they're thinking about winning the SOCON. They're thinking about winning a national championship at the FCS level. And so what better way to test how good of a football team you are against the SEC? You can see why you spend a lot of time behind a pulpit. Now, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> Rashawn, thanks for coming by. Thanks, guys, for having me. War, War, Eagle. War Eagle, guys. War Eagle. Right. Rashawn Frost, Auburn defensive lineman in the mid to late 90s, joining us here on the show. Well, Tiger Walk has ended. Anybody enjoy Tiger Walk today? A lot of energy out there with the guys coming in. Yes, indeed. Big crowd, lots of emotion as the Tigers made their way uh, into Jordan-Hare Stadium. The Tiger Walk Report is presented by Hibbit and City Gear. They have all the hottest brands, Nike, Adidas, Jordan, and more, including all the latest releases. Check out a Hibbit or City Gear store near you or visit Hibbit.com. Hibbit, a proud supporter of Auburn football. The Tiger Tailgate Show continues in a moment. Hey parents and kids, it's a perfect time for students to read their way to the Iron Bowl in AEA's Be a Champion and Read contest. AEA wants to help K through 6th grade students to be academic champions, just like the Auburn Tigers. Students who participate in the Be a Champion and Read Challenge could win three tickets to the Iron Bowl and a chance to take the field on game day. Ask your teacher about contest rules. Encourage your child to be an AEA champion reader and win a trip to the Iron Bowl. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch, Bud Light Beer, and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Kaneka Sausage is a product we all know and love, and it's the official sausage and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Kaneka Sausage is made from the finest cuts of pork, patented blend of seasonings, all natural casings, and smoked over a pure hickory fire for that true southern flavor. Enjoy a crowd pleasing Kaneka Sausage dog or premium hot dog while watching the Tigers and make Kaneka part of your game day or any day. Kaneka Sausage is celebrating their 75th year of the Sessions family, making their premium smoked sausage in Evergreen, Alabama. Be sure to visit the new Connecticut gift shop right off I-65 at exit 96. Who out there likes chicken and eggs? Both are protein packed and loaded with essential vitamins and minerals to keep you healthy and your immune system strong. Start your morning with a delicious omelet with all your favorite fix-ins or have some grilled chicken for dinner. Here in Alabama, we produce almost half a billion eggs a year. You just can't beat that. However you choose to enjoy chicken or eggs, remember, they're good for you and great for Alabama. This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Kaneka Sausage. All right, we're back in this two-minute drill. You know, I, I felt a couple of drops of water, and I had no idea where they were coming from. Because the sun is shining. I mean, you just 
from our stage, you look around, you hardly see clouds, but sure enough, a very light rain has started to fall on a bright sunny day here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Uh, Brad Law, Stan White with you. Stan, same question that I asked Andy. Highlights of your summer. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. with, with kids my age, I've got a freshman, a, uh, a middle schooler, seventh grader, and a fourth grader. Um, we, you travel very little vacation-wise. You uh -huh. travel a lot sporting event-wise. So between travel baseball, um, you know, off-season football tr workouts, mm -hmm. and softball with my daughter, uh, that's pretty much what it was. Uh, so yeah, we uh, you know we did travel to some nice places yeah. across the southeast. Got to go to Orlando and we we hit Disney for a couple of days playing. Sure. But it was during baseball tournaments down at, down at the uh, down in Orlando outside of Orlando. So yeah, yeah it really uh, you know I, I, I home away from home is Lake Martin. Love to get love to get up there. We've we've had a place at Lake Martin for years, and so I love that. We don't get to spend enough time there. Um, just 35 minutes up the road from from here from yeah. God's country. But, yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's family time pretty yeah. much. Farthest know. distance. Was Orlando the, the farthest No, distance? actually, we went to um, – well, it wasn't the summer. It was it was, it was was actually late like spring. We actually went, we took a baseball team to uh, Las Vegas. Wow. And played in a tournament out there. Uh, it was it was not this summer, but it was within the last year. And yeah. so that was probably the furthest distance uh, we, we, t we did for, for baseball. But – as far as the network is concerned, it is your off season, so that that counts. We'll count <laughs> yeah. it. Las Vegas suffering for the cause. Thank you very much, Stan. We got two minutes, and then Chandler Wooten joins us on the stage. This is the Auburn Sports Network. Live Sports Radio, bringing you all the action of game day with no delay. Every touchdown, tackle, sideline report, and all the analysis from Andy Burcham, Stan White, and Ronnie Brown with no delay. At home and on the road, $25 new or $10 to reprogram the one you already have. Also, use it for every broadcast of home men's and women's basketball, baseball, and softball games, all with no delay. With Live Sports Radio, presented by Alpha Insurance. Sports matter. They bring us together. That's why we're a proud sponsor of athletic programs across the state. More fans, families, and friends trust Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama to provide the health insurance coverage and services they depend on. We're proud to support Alabamians. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. We cover what matters. Who out there likes to eat chicken? Did you know that when it comes to chicken production, Alabama rules the roost? In fact, we're ranked second in the country in broiler production. That's meat-type chickens with nearly 2,600 poultry farm families raising more than a billion birds a year. Alabama's poultry industry adds more than $15 billion a year to the state's economy and provides jobs for almost 90,000 Alabamians. So be sure to prepare your favorite chicken dish this football season. Hey parents and kids, it's a perfect time for students to read their way to the Iron Bowl in AEA's Be a Champion and Read contest. AEA wants to help K through 6th grade students to be academic champions, just like the Auburn Tigers. Students who participate in the Be a Champion and Read challenge could win three tickets to the Iron Bowl and a chance to take the field on game day. Ask your teacher about contest rules. Encourage your child to be an AEA champion reader and win a trip to the Iron Bowl. Back, back here on the Tiger Tailgate Show, Brad Law, Andy Burcham, Stan White. This is the last segment for, for these guys before we let them uh, get away to the booth and continue their prep for today's game. Pre-game, during the game, or post-game, you'll always get a handmade meal for a great price over at Jack's. Just feed your crew for less with a big box of ham-breaded fried chicken or juicy burgers made with 100% American beef only at Jack's, all about the South. Well, joining us now is a guy who, uh, well, knows a thing or two about uh, this head coach, this team, a lot of the personnel, had an outstanding Auburn career himself. Former Auburn linebacker Chandler Wooten is with us on the stage. Chandler War Eagle, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, War Eagle, thank you for having me. Glad to have you here today, Chandler. And I know folks are wondering, what, give, give us an update with regard to your career at this point. Yeah, so I'm still out there in Arizona. Um, I just had a great preseason. Um, so now I'm out there with the practice squad uh, to start out in, uh, in Arizona. All right. Chandler, you you maybe can give a different perspective of, of any of us uh, sitting up here on stage. You, you Your career was, I don't know of any college 
players that went through the type of things you guys did as far as a, a pandemic and off the field issue that caused so many disruptions throughout America, but obviously in the college, uh, the football world, talk a little bit about how that impacted just the career of, of, of a lot of the players. Because that's just a different, when you sign in college, you don't expect something like that. You may go through physical injuries, but not something of that nature that, that makes a lot of things change course. Yeah, I just, I think it speaks to this kind of, you know, people that we bring here to Auburn. Um, a lot of high character guys, a lot of people with a, a lot of resilience. Um, and so just to, you know, see how they've overcome a lot of the things in their way um, to still be here um, and have the opportunity to go out there and play today. I'm excited to watch. You sat out a year and then came back and had a terrific year a year ago. And anytime we asked a coach about Chandler Wooten, the word leader came in every single time. How tough, as a result of being that kind of leader, though, how tough was it to sit out? a year before coming back? Yeah, it was extremely tough, um, you know, especially because, you know, just knowing how bad you want to be out there as a competitor, um, to, you know, go out there uh, to war every week with your teammates, your brothers. Um, it was definitely tough, but um, it was just a family decision that I had to make, um, and, you know, I would do it again if I had to. And so, uh, uh, you know, my teammates understood, and uh, they were there with me, you know, every step of the way, and so, you know, I was really thank thankful for that. I know they were thrilled to have you back last year. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, I, and it was a thrill to be back, though, um, you know. That was probably the toughest part, you know, just being away from that team team camaraderie, you know, that you build in the, uh, you know, in the locker room and uh, the relationships you build. I want to ask you about a guy that, that spent most of the season last year, got hurt uh, against Penn State and, and was never never able to really regain that form because of that injury, Owen Papo. Mm -hmm. um, you've been to battle with him, obviously, the uh, last couple of years. Talk about him and what you're looking forward to from him today being back fully healthy. Yeah, I'm excited to watch him. Uh, you know, probably my most favorite, uh, you know, person I'm looking forward to watching just from the simple fact that you know uh, last year you know he did have those injuries that you know kind of set him back I mean I know how bad you know he wanted to be out there with us you know going to battle with us and um you know just obviously the athletic ability is there uh, you know but I'm excited to see you know how he's growing as a leader you know just vocally um, you know just he always does it by example but you know that's just that kind of next step that he's, you know he's taken uh, you know throughout this offseason so I'm excited to see it come to fruition today you strike me as the kind of guy who likes to be prepared. I mean, you're an intelligent guy. You like to prepare for things. What was your process like as you got ready to go to the NFL? What what sorts of conversations did you have with people about making the transition from college to professional ball? Yeah, obviously just, you know, from the preparation standpoint, you know, it takes a lot more on your body and a lot more, uh, you know, mental focus than it does in college. Um, obviously, now that's your job. And so now that's what you do, you know, day round, uh, you know, every single day of the week. Um, you know, you don't have class to worry about. You don't have, you know, anything else to worry about. So it's kind of like how do you redirect your focus and, uh, you know, use the, your time wisely and time management and, and to become the best player you can. So, Kobe McClain, and, and you are now gone from this squad. It gives a guy like a Cam Riley an opportunity. A big body, six foot five. Man. We haven't had many six foot five linebackers around here. What do you see out of a guy like Cam Riley and his role at that other linebacker spot this year? Yeah, Cam is another guy I'm really excited, uh, you know, to watch uh, coming up this year. Um, just obviously, you said six five, you know, really long, athletic, um, you know, just a physical specimen. And so, you know, if he can, uh, you know, put that together, you know, with uh, you know, study and then, you know, staying on top of the stuff in the weight room and nutrition and stuff, you know, the sky's really the limit for him. And so, I'm excited to watch him, you know, today. How do you watch, and obviously this will be the first time that you do it, but <laughs> with knowing so many of, of the guys first year out, you're not watching guys 20 years younger mm -hmm. than you. So kind of take me through the, the mentality of getting ready to watch these guys, so many of them you played with. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's different for me because, you know, I was just here last year. And so, um, you know, the exciting thing for me will be just to see how everybody improved. Um, you know, just uh, from a physical standpoint, how, how, how much bigger everybody got, how, fa how much faster they got, um, you know, just how they play the game, you know, just uh, we should be a, a much more mature team, smarter team. So, you know, just that kind of stuff I'm looking for to see how everybody improved, um, just to see, you know, that they are better football players. Jake Levant was put on scholarship this year, one of those linebackers, those guys that have toiled, they wanted to play for the tech. That's got to be heartwarming to see one of your former brothers out there that has been is put, put on scholarship. Now. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, just when I got on social media that day and seen that, um, it definitely was. <laughs> A, a very good moment to see. Um, obviously, I was extremely happy and reached out to him. Um, you know, just a great thing to see, man, just because hard work does not go unnoticed, like Coach Harson always said. Um, and so he's been working hard for a long time. And so, uh, yeah, it was just good. It was a good thing to see. I know you're you're shortly removed from Auburn, but what is Auburn, what is Auburn meant to you or mean to you? Yeah, man, it means the world to me. Um, you know, this is a place where I, you know, grew as a person, you know, first and foremost, you know, 
became closer to God here. I, you know, grew, you know, so many long-lasting relationships, you know, had my son here. And so uh, Auburn holds a special place in my heart. So every time I come here, it just feels like I'm coming home. So. How is the family? Uh, doing good. They actually yeah. just pulled up right there. So, yeah? Uh, yeah. There we go, right. The beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So, yeah. So Future Auburn Tiger right there. Yeah, so it's been good to, you know, be around them and have a back uh, around. So. When, when do you head back to Arizona? Uh, I head back tomorrow. Uh, so we start back practicing uh, next week. So I head back out there tomorrow. Good, Good stuff. Good. Wish you the best this season yes, and uh, continued success. Thanks for being man, with us today. I appreciate today. it. Thank Chandler. you so much. Where you Where you man? Chandler Wooten, one of the leaders on last year's team, and uh, talked with us a number of times in the locker room after games uh, throughout his Auburn career. Wonderful representative and a great Auburn man, former Auburn linebacker Chandler Wooten. We're going to keep the defensive theme going here we've uh, we've had a defensive lineman we had a linebacker now let's bring in a defensive back Gerard Powers is going to join us here in about six minutes when the Tiger tailgate show continues in a moment putting together a winning drive Third and long from the shotgun. takes focus determination There's the snap, dropping back. and that powerful form of energy Scrambles to his right, looking downfield. called belief Launches it toward the end zone. that belief in a team in a community of fans, in each other. Touchdown! That powerful energy connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. You hear that? I'm a torrential downpour. Torrential? What's that even mean? It means you can't see out of your windshield. And if you have the wrong car insurance, you might have to make it rain to fix your bumper. So switch to Allstate, save money, and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Based on coverage and limits selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Things we take for granted. Ordinary opportunities for parents and their children can be a foster child's extraordinary. You have the power to do something positive that will change the life of a young person right here in Alabama. Open your heart and open your home to a foster child today. For more information, visit www.dhr.alabama.gov or call 1-866-64-AL-KIDS. Brought to you by the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. Children's of Alabama reminds you that every child's head injury should be treated like a serious injury until a doctor says it's not. In fact, the CDC estimates some 4 million sports and recreation-related concussions occur each year. Even a minor fall or collision may be a concern. Symptoms typically include headaches, unsteadiness, confusion, or sleepiness. To find out what to do in case of a suspected concussion, visit childrensal.org forward slash concussion and always dial 911 in case of an emergency. This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show presented by Koneka Sausage. All right, we'll take another look at the Yellowwood scoreboard. Four games involving SEC teams. One of them uh, is nearly at halftime, two at halftime, and then one near the end of the third quarter. The later game is sixth-ranked Texas A&M. They were finally able to start the second half of that game in College Station. Aggies have tacked on another touchdown. Texas A&M leads Sam Houston 24 to nothing now in the closing stages of the third quarter. They're just before the half in Oxford. Troy is trying to get on the board. They're in the red zone, but right now it's number 21 Ole Miss shutting out the Trojans 21 to nothing, and the Rebels have 201 rushing yards just before halftime in that matchup. A couple of games that have reached the half. It's number three Georgia all over 11th ranked Oregon 28 to three in a game that's being played at the Mercedes-Benz uh, Stadium in Atlanta. And in Fayetteville, number 19, Arkansas is shutting out 23rd ranked Cincinnati, 14 to nothing there. K.J. Jefferson has a rushing touchdown and a passing score on the day so far. Top 25 action, number nine, Oklahoma leads UTEP at the half. It's 28 to 10 in Norman. Number 16, Miami really starting to pour it on. Bethune Cookman, Hurricane scored a couple of times late in the second quarter. They lead that matchup 42 to 10 at the half in Coral Gables. It is uh, number 24, Houston trailing at the half. Texas San Antonio, the Roadrunners lead the Cougars 14 to seven at the half in that matchup. And uh, some finals from today. Eighth-ranked Michigan, a big winner over Colorado State, 51-7. Number 13, NC State, slipped out of East Carolina with a win, 21-20 to today in Greenville. Former Auburn uh, uh, defensive back Gerard Powers is on the stage. He's up next in two minutes. This is the Auburn Sports Network.
The Auburn Tigers Today podcast keeps you plugged into the Tigers like nowhere else with Andy Bertram's weekly coaches' interviews, post game audio, and Jacob Hellman's comprehensive This Week in Auburn Athletics feature. It's the only podcast that keeps you current on everything happening around Auburn Athletics, from Jordan Hare to Neville Arena and beyond. Just like and subscribe to Auburn Tigers Today podcast. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of Auburn Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Take it to the house this football season with the Alabama Manufactured Housing Association and the Auburn Tigers. If Auburn returns its first received kickoff in the second half for a touchdown at one of its home SEC games, one lucky fan will win a $75,000 down payment towards the purchase of a manufactured home from an authorized AMHA dealer. Don't miss your chance to take it to the house this season and win a beautiful manufactured home. Register today at auburntigers.com slash take it to the house. Certain terms and conditions may apply. For a complete set of contest rules, visit auburntigers.com slash take it to the house. Koneka Sausage is a product we all know and love, and it's the official sausage and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Koneka Sausage is made from the finest cuts of pork, patented blend of seasonings, all natural casings, and smoked over a pure hickory fire for that true southern flavor. Enjoy a crowd-pleasing Koneka Sausage dog or premium hot dog while watching the Tigers and make Koneka part of your game day or any day. Koneka Sausage is celebrating their 75th year of the Sessions family making their premium smoked sausage in Evergreen, Alabama. Be sure to visit the new Koneka gift shop right off I-65 at exit 96. half hour of the Tiger Tailgate Show outside Jordan Harris Stadium. Britt Bowen alongside Jason Campbell and Ronnie Brown. Got a special guest this segment. But before we get there, did you know that the same people who installed the sound system in Jordan Harris Stadium and run the sound system each home game are also available for your special event? Auburn AV can handle any size event. Even if you bring 87,000 of your closest friends, visit auburnav.com to see all their audio video solutions. Welcome in former Auburn defensive back, Gerard Powers. Gerard, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys having me. I love when you come on the show. <laughs> I went back and watched the segment last year. You guys, y'all y'all have just a different camaraderie. It's just like a bunch of friends getting back together. What's, what's it like seeing these guys up here on stage? I mean, but these two guys are kind of special to me just because uh, I came to Auburn as they were leaving. So I, I got to know them as I was getting recruited and, you know, looked up to these guys as they were being idolized of uh, – and having the careers they was having at Auburn. So when I started my career at Auburn and they're going to the NFL, uh, it kind of just gave me aspirations and inspirations of just wanting to do what they do, follow their footsteps or whatnot. So uh, I guess my recruiting class in 05 had some big shoes to fill because in 04, obviously, everybody knows the tremendous season that those guys had uh, in, in, in that year. So uh, these two guys, I mean, you know, you know, Big, big, big uh, heroes of mine. Yeah, but Gerard got some young studs in his family that's growing up, his kids. So we're going we're gonna to try to sign them too when they get, get about yeah, we're 17, on official 18. Yeah, we're on official visit this weekend with my 10-year-old for sure. Rashad, tell about what it's like being back here at Auburn. You know, you come back every year, man. You're uh, like a great person, the uh, ambassador for the university and everything uh, that you're doing in Huntsville and – Let's talk about being back here and what it means when you come back and how these guys, when you look at this group that we have now, what is something that you feel like the opportunities they can present in themselves? Man, well, first of all, every time I come back, it's a new building being built or something <laughs> new. Like, man, it's crazy just looking around oh, campus yeah. to see some of the stuff that, that these guys have access to now compared to what we yeah. had. Uh, but the guys that's here now, man, I mean, they got everything in front of them. I mean, they got every resource possible uh, needed in order to succeed here. It's just a matter of us going out there and doing it on the field. And uh, I think once we get to the success that we're supposed to have and the, ses the success that we will see uh, this season and get on the field, I think everything will come, you know, how it's supposed to come. Yeah, and, and as you talk about, like, resources, um, obviously there's a lot of guys who play football but then there's only a few football players. Right. You're one of those guys who is a football player. You know the game from inside out, and the game's changed. And so with all the resources, talk about, like, why it's important for these young men to understand, to learn the game, to watch film, 
um, because of the advantage that it gives you as a player? Man, well, just playing in the NFL for nine seasons, uh, I mean, that, that, that's how you succeed. You learn that it's not always the physical part, obviously. It's always the, the work that you're doing outside the facility, outside the itinerary schedule that you have every day. And like I said, the resources that these guys have, man, uh, I mean, I, I can only imagine the 4 team. If you guys had what these guys had today, oh. I mean, I know you guys went undefeated. I'm pretty sure in 3 we could have went undefeated yeah. as well. Uh, so I just think these guys need to understand the, the, the value of their college lives and their college careers and really take advantage of it because, you know, you're a blink twice and, and it's your graduating year. So you, you just don't want to, you know, leave here and not turn over every leap possible to help you succeed. And for you, uh, what are these resources even when you were here? How, how did that help you get to the next level where you spent eight years in the NFL and, like Dad, were pretty successful as well? Man, the coaches that I had, you know, with Will Muschamp, uh, Coach Tubb, uh, David Gibbs, you know, I had some guys that, you know, had experience in the NFL and, you know, those I was blessed enough to be a part of those guys as a youngster to where they really groomed me and, and turned me into the player that I uh, needed to be. So I was really blessed you know, to have a good coaching staff and just good people around me to, to kind of funnel me into the direction I needed to be going. Yeah, and as you talk about coaches and the importance of that, that impact, that opportunity, you know, coming in as young players, we all feel like we can play right now. <laughs> right. Um, you know, but understanding, too, there's some growth and development that has to happen. Looking at this football team, um, obviously there's depth that's needed, mm -hmm. but, you know, what are some of the advantages that you see that a lot of these young guys have versus, you know, I think even a few years back just in terms of how they look at the game, how you view the game, the changes of the game to give them that advantage? Right. Well, one thing with this team in particular with, you know, some of the, I guess, the, the, the noise that happened this offseason uh, surrounding the team, you know, a lot of times that brings uh, chemistry. You know, that makes guys come together even closer. Uh, I know you guys can speak on it in 03 and 04, the situation that happened with Tubb to where it was just some bad publicity going in that offseason right. to really gel that team together. In 04, y'all go out there and put it together. So I think that's one of the main advantages that we have going into this season to where it feels like our team got their backs against the wall. And normally when you got your back against the wall, you only got one thing to do, and that's fight your way up out of it. So I think we'll see a team uh, this season that's, that's fighting week in, week out, and we'll see that camaraderie that, uh, that we've probably been missing the past few years. Well, you know, you look at our team last year, you lose a guy like a Roger McCrary, you mm -hmm. know, a uh, big time DB gets drafted, it's Tennessee Titans. And you think about trying to fill those shoes. If you're some of these young guys that's trying to get get his spot and get out there and get some early playing time. But how is it? How is the mindset for a defensive back when you feel like you got to fill the shoes of someone that left some really, really big shoes to fill? Preparation, man. Uh, once you go through that week of preparation, if you're doing what you're supposed to do on Saturdays, it should, it should just be reaction time. Uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to go out there uh, thinking about you know this player or that player. You should just be able to go out there and react. And you, like you said, you got Roger who you know had a hell of a career here. Is going to have a hell of an NFL career, and that's a big shoot big shoes to fill. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but Zach Etheridge, uh, I believe in him as a coach, believed in him as a player when he came in, and I was kind of his OG or his mentor. <laughs> uh, so just knowing what type of guy Zach is, I'm pretty sure we'll see some new guys in that secondary pop up and kind of uh, make their name known. I mean, it happened to me in 07 uh, when you had David Irons leave and you had some big DBs leave to where guys were kind of wondering who was going to take lead of that secondary room. And when my opportunity came in 07, I made sure to take advantage of it and uh, kind of started my name then. And it's a similar situation here. We got Simpson and some other guys that, you know, we know that can play. It's just a matter of them taking advantage of the opportunity. Tell me a little bit more about Zach Etheridge. You played with him, now him as a coach. What X factor does he bring to that DB room? Well, first of all, Zach wasn't a big-time recruit. He wasn't like a guy that was given anything. You know, he worked for everything that he got. He earned everything. He earned playing time early as a freshman. Uh, so just seeing his development as a player and seeing his worth ethic as a player, I mean, all that stuff that you learn as a player transitions into your real life. His real life right now is he's a coach. That's what he does for a living. That's how he feeds his family. That's how he takes care of his kids. Uh, so knowing the things that he learned, watching him through summer workouts, watching him in meeting rooms, seeing his character and things like that, you expect to see the same type of things him as a coach, and that's what he brings. He brings a real mentor type factor. His uh, his expectation of his players is high. It's through the roof. Uh, he's not going to ask somebody to do something that they're not capable of. Uh, so everything that Zach brings as a coach, he brought it as a player. It's the same characteristics. And speaking of coaching, 
you haven't gotten the itch to <laughs> want to, I mean, because as one of those players, like I said, like hats off to you, but not only were you a good player, you were a football player. You right. understood the game. Obviously, you're raising your boys. They're playing. They're involved in football. And so you can't say to, especially somebody of your caliber that, you know, understands the game that way. Do you, right. Have you ever gotten the itch? No, I definitely have the itch. I got the itch at this moment. Don't get me wrong. But uh, definitely have the itch. But I do feel like my responsibility first and foremost is to be a father of my boys and making sure that, you know, I can provide and do the things uh, for them to be able to, I guess, funnel them in the direction that they need to go. Uh, but don't be surprised if y'all see me uh, on somebody's staff soon. So don't be surprised. Have you gone uh, and done some of the, 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 the <laughs> like using your <laughs> resources with oh, yeah. some of the coaches, obviously, <laughs> going and done some of the NFL stuff with the coaches? I have. I have. I went to Tampa a couple times, and uh, Bruce Arians was my coach in, uh, in Indianapolis, also Arizona. So yeah. before he retired last year, uh, two years ago, I went out there and did an intern, and now Todd Bowles is the head coach, and he was my defensive coordinator. Uh, so I do some things with them to help. I do some things with um, with a couple other teams to where they might call and ask me to break down certain film for certain positions. Uh, so I'm, I'm involved. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just not, not contract. See, I told you. I told y'all. He contractually, was, I'm he not was involved yet. Guys. But right. yeah, I can't get away from it. I, I mean, it, I mean, it's in me. It's just who I am. All right, I gotta ask. Last time you were on, there there was a lot of debate about golfing. Have you guys golfed <laughs> together in the last year? Or did y'all finally get on the course hey, and play 18 or no? We we haven't. They've been okay. running from All me. Right. Don't get me wrong. They've been running from me. But I have golfed with a couple of their buddies, <laughs> Tim Jennings, who's a Georgia guy, who which we do not like. I did. Uh, I did take some money from Tim a couple months ago and I haven't been golfing like I need to but I'm going to get back out there soon. Yeah. I've been working. I haven't been golfing by default. <laughs> I've been working. I got uh, a full-time that, that's what you call you work? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you call this work? Right. No, I got a full-time job. Oh, on the other side. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I got you. I, gotta get my knee. I, gotta I can't, get I can't wait to witness that golf round. Gerard, thanks for joining us everybody. Gerard it. Powers joining us here on the Tiger Tailgate Show. We have more coming up with a two-minute drill. The Tiger Tailgate Show continues in a moment. The Edward Via College of Osteopathic Medicine in Auburn is dedicated to its mission of transforming medical students into caring, compassionate physicians. VCOM partners with Auburn University for student activities, shared learning experiences, and research opportunities. Students are instructed in a hands-on learning environment by outstanding faculty members that are dedicated to student success. VCOM is working to improve the health of Alabama's citizens by increasing the number of primary care physicians throughout the state, especially in rural and underserved areas. Find out more at vcom.edu. And we're back with breaking news. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any Coke fan, so make sure you... Jim. <laughs> Jim. We're on the air. Ooh, yes, this tastes like the best Coke ever to me. Your thoughts, Jen? Well, can I have a sip? <laughs> Jen, we're in the middle of reporting the news. I need to try it first. Saturdays in the South mean football and outdoor projects. And like an all-American lineup, nothing works harder or better than quality John Deere equipment. So get to Sun South, where it's more affordable than ever to own the best equipment available. Plus, discover our new selection of John Deere compact construction equipment, perfect for larger projects. Think Sun South with 21 locations throughout the Southeast or shop online at sunsouth.com. Sun South, proud to be the preferred tractor of the Auburn Tigers. If baby could talk, she'd say a lot. You'd know what she's thinking and what makes her happy. But unfortunately, baby can't talk or remind you. You're the one taking her to daycare today. And she won't speak up if you drive straight to work like any other day and never think to look in the backseat. Every year, Dozens of kids die from heat stroke in cars. No one is perfect, so set a reminder and always look before you lock. Where's baby? Paid for by NHTSA. This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Kaneka Sausage. Two-minute drill presented by Kaneka Sausage. Before we get going, we've got to let Ronnie Brown and Jason Campbell finish the autograph session here up on stage. Jason, we'll start with you. Continue the trend. What were the summer highlights this year for you? I, I, I heard a little sneak peek of it yesterday. Oh, man, summer highlights for me. Uh, fortunately, yeah, I got married. <laughs> That's one. Uh, number two is I probably say I got uh, I couldn't golf this whole summer. Couldn't so that golf? What happened? Yeah, I had to get stem cell treatments in my left knee. Okay, uh, all so, right, that's important. Yeah, so I took golf away for about six months. So 
I'm about ready to get back on the course and take Ronnie out, take <laughs> Rod out, take anybody out. So, is it going to take strokes off your golf game? Well, they got to give me some strokes to start back. You know, <laughs> you know, golf is something you got to do every day to get better at it. All right. So, with the wedding, where'd you get married? How many people? Give us all the details. What well, was just, it? Yeah, we got married in Birmingham. We yeah. had a, a small private setting. Uh, just you know, really close friends and family. And you know, my wife, she's from Birmingham, and she's actually a graduate from Auburn as well. So, yeah, we was. Just had a great small wedding and uh, about 150 people at the wedding reception, so it was really good. I gotta ask, what kind of cake did you have? Oh man, I think I had we had like a variety of cakes. Okay. So you know, I'm I like chocolate. She doesn't like chocolate. All right. So you have to have a little cake for me and a little bit for her as well. Did we go on a honeymoon? Have we taken a trip yet? Not yet. We took a mini honeymoon, and but our biggest one will probably come up this spring. So what, what wanna, destinations? Where are we going? Ooh. You know, I like I'm a, I'm a beach guy. You know, I like islands. You know, All right. I, yeah, so I'm a you know I'm a beach guy. So we got to go somewhere out of the U.S. Uh, somewhere where it's really nice and warm, and you know I can get my feet in the sand and kind of kick back and relax. Pacific Islands or Caribbean? No, I'm a Caribbean island All guy. Right. You know, I got to be warm water. You know, Pacific that's too cold for me. Two minute drill with Jason Campbell. Busy summer for Mr. Campbell. Congratulations on the marriage. Coming up, we'll have a pregame segment with Auburn and Mercer. This is the Auburn Sports Network. As the Tigers host Mercer for the annual Wear White game. For tickets and more information, visit aubtix.com or call the ticket office at 1-855-AUB-2010. That's the 2022 Auburn football home opener versus Mercer on September 3rd at 6 p.m. for the Wear White game. Buy your tickets today. Oh, Rico. Children's of Alabama reminds you that every child's head injury should be treated like a serious injury until a doctor says it's not. In fact, the CDC estimates some 4 million sports and recreation-related concussions occur each year. Even a minor fall or collision may be a concern. Symptoms typically include headaches, unsteadiness, confusion, or sleepiness. To find out what to do in case of a suspected concussion, visit childrensal.org forward slash concussion and always dial 911 in case of an emergency. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a really big tree near your garage. Now, I'm a really big tree on your garage. And car. And if you don't have the right insurance, the cost to fix this could leave you wishing money grew on trees. So bundle your home and auto with Allstate to save up to 25% and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Based on coverage and limits selected, savings vary subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Auto prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. We're live from Auburn Bank Signing Day. Angela scanning the closing documents. Looks like the competitive rate her Auburn Bank mortgage lender promised. She gets the pen, clicks it once, twice, spin move, and we have a signature. Angela Green is a first-time homeowner. With competitive rates, online applications, and hands-on mortgage lenders, the wins just feel bigger. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. NMLS number 403461. Just, Just over an hour from kickoff between Auburn and Mercer to kick off the 2022 Auburn football season. Time to talk a little matchups between the Tigers and the Bears. Britt Bowen here with Jason Campbell and Ronnie Brown. Guys, let's start with the quarterback battle. I mean, that, that was the big talking point, especially in the last month. Who was going to win the starting job? T.J. Finley came out on top, and guys, he won it. Over two Division I transfers. Just, just your thoughts on him and, and, and the keys for him today with this matchup with Mercer. Well, everyone talked about the quarterback better this offseason. Everyone wanted to know who's going to be the signal caller. And, you know, TJ is the guy probably with the most experience in that room. Uh, he was the guy that was here last year on the Harson, and he knows the offense in and out. And I think going to the spring, that kind of gave him a, the advantage. And I would think the other kids was kind of in a chase mode at that standpoint. But, you know, it all comes down to just situational football. And like I said, he had some experience last year. He got a chance to start three games uh, when Bo got injured. So, But it's a different story when you had a whole offseason to prepare as a starter. And you get a chance to, to build continuity and build chemistry with the guys around you and, and to be in a competitive environment. So this will be his first real opportunity to see what he does uh, as far as like from, from what happened this offseason as far as improving as a quarterback and, and seeing where he's at, see how far he's come. But at the same time, Made no states about it that, you know, this is a game that every game is one game at a time. And, you know, you can't get ahead of yourself. And I think for the other kids like Robbie Ashford and Calzada and, you know, Holden Gurner, you know, the thing about 
two of those kids is Holden and Robbie doesn't have a lot of college experience. So, you know, it's important that one of those guys, especially Robbie, can probably get some game time experience in some of these games, the first two games, because you always need two quarterbacks throughout a season. You just do. You never know what happens in a in a big in a big SEC. Ronnie switching to the running game. Of course, you got Tank Bigsby and Jarquez Hunter coming back. He was an SEC All Freshman team member. Tank, of course, rushed for a thousand yards last year. How big is it for TJ to have those guys returning in the backfield, which is supposed to be Auburn's strength this year? Yeah, you know, when you look at the running game, obviously, when you talk about football, you want your offense to be complementary, um, meaning you want everything to kind of fit together. And so when you talk about the running game, um, you know, luckily that's the easier thing to do in terms of passer, passing concepts and things of that nature. So you got as talented backfield as you have, you know, here at Auburn. You talk about Tank Bigsby, Jarquez Hunter. The freshman Damari Austin, then Sean Jackson. Obviously, it's great. I'm happy that he got a he earned a scholarship. And so, you know, you talk about that room, the competition. You know, it makes you better because you have to show up on a weekly basis, and it makes it easy to be able to you know compete with those guys inside the room, make yourself better. Um, obviously, you have a talented group um, as any, but uh, it's about growth and development. And so, I think when you talk about this game, you know, you want your running backs to complement what you're doing in the passing game, and Obviously, when you can get those guys also involved in that part of the game, it goes well for your offense. Take some pressure off that guy at the signal caller and get some of those free touches. Even, you know, if it comes down to check downs, you know, those are just extended handoffs. And so if you can get, you know, that pressure off your quarterback, let him get comfortable because, you know, early in the season, it's defense's advantage. And so just trying to cre create that consistency, um, creating that continuity amongst your offense and really just kind of being able to, you know, I think complement one another in the passing game, running game, and get involved. I think that helps this game. Jason, the change at the center with Tate Johnson re replacing Nick Brahms a as a quarterback and T.J. Finley, he's obviously familiar with Tate, but how does that impact today's game, if at all, just, again, being being a new center for the quarterback? Well, the one thing about the, the center is he's the second most sitting caller outside of the quarterback. You know, he makes all the line calls for his run, run blocks and pass protections, picking up certain blitzes. Uh, you know, the quarterback also is, a, is the guy that's standing five yards from him that can see it from a different level. But, you know, Tate, this is a great opportunity for him to get experience against a Mercer team. You know, you, you start off with a – you know, they're a really good opponent, but they're not your big SEC yeah. opponents that you have to start off with to start the season. So, I think this is a game that he needs uh, experience-wise. And, and he just got to take it one play at a time. I'm pretty sure, it, you know, his heart's probably beating 90 miles per hour to get ready for this game because – it is new. You know, Nick Browns has been that guy for the last four years at that position. So anytime you're filling in those shoes, uh, you know, it, it comes with a big responsibility. But I think him being a high school teammate of Tank Bisbee, I think helps him with the comfortable level. I think him and Tank uh, being, being teammates understand each other. So I think the communication standpoint is the thing that I want to see him grow as week by week. And guys, offensive line as a whole, how big of a matchup is this today with Mercer just trying to get yourself established, be in sync, playing together, and going up against a, a talented offensive or defensive line rather from Mercer, but I, I think an undersized defensive line. How important will that be for Auburn to take advantage of that? Yeah, it's early. I mean, it's important to get going early. Um, and you talk about the offensive line. You know, it's important to allow those guys to fire off. And that's why the running game is so important because it gives the linemen an opportunity to get comfortable. Um, you know, instead of being on retreat, you talk about in the passing game, you know, in the running game, your first step is forward. In passing game, you know, usually it tends to be a little bit backwards retreat. And so you're playing off of what the defender is trying to do to you. And so, you know, if you're able to, you know, I think kind of start that, um, and control that line of scrimmage, it makes it easier to get in that comfort zone um, as well as, you know, just allowing you to be the aggressor. Um, and so, you know, I think that's going to be important, especially when you're talking about tre creating consistency. You know, you got two, three guys from LaGrange, uh, so I think there's a familiarity there. But, you know, the offensive line is the most important position when you talk about being able to play together as a unit. And so if you get those guys all on the same page, like you said, it starts with Tate as the signal, I mean, as the signal caller of the offensive line, um, the communication amongst that group, and then just trying to get comfortable um, and taking that pressure off. And it helps, you know, in a game like this, not saying Mercer is not a, a formidable opponent, but it's not what you'll see later in the season. So hopefully, you know, this is a starting thing, a starting point. And the thing that you can't coach is um, – uh, you can't coach experience. experience. You can't get guys used to being out there. That just has to happen. And so, you know, you get these guys to get out on the field, being able to get that experience um, so that they can be prepared and learn from it as well. 
Mercer put up 63 points on Moorhead State last week. Quarterback Fred Payton, he had four pass TDs. They had a big rushing game. The passing game was working all around. Pretty good matchup today for this Auburn defense. Just the thoughts on this matchup going up against the talented Mercer offense. Well, one thing you can't do is get caught sleeping looking ahead. Yep. Uh, let's, let's be honest, last year's Georgia State game, it went all the way down to the wire. Uh, so the Mer Mercer, I remember a couple few years ago, for the whole first half, they was like neck and neck. So this is a team that the coach is building that program. They had their best season last year, and they want to continue to build off of that. And it's all about getting those guys – fearing and ready to play. And the one thing about it, this is their biggest biggest atmosphere game of the whole season for them. So, you know, you know that they want to come in here and try to, you know, take advantage of the opportunity to play in front of eighty to 90,000 people. So, you know, our guys got to be locked in and ready to play. In the first game, you just never know what's going to happen. So be ready for everything. Another big matchup to watch is for Auburn's second gear, secondary against receiver Ty James. Five, five receptions, 192 yards, three touchdowns last week. Guys, who's the best matchup for him today? Well, I think, you know, it's going to be as a unit. Um, you know, if you're placing guys, you know, like Roger McCrary, you got some leadership over there. Um, it's going to be about communicating because that guy's going to run different routes. They're going to try to put him in different positions. Obviously, you know, he's one of the playmakers on your offense, so you can't just expect him to be in one spot. Um, and so it's going to be about the communication of the secondary, the linebackers, and making sure that that's a guy that you always know, you know, where he's at. And so I think if you can do that, you can communicate very well. Um, you know, you can kind of, you know, control him, hopefully not let it, allow him to get going because it just can't put that pressure on one guy when you talk about a defensive unit. And then the other part of it about defense is getting all 11 guys to the ball. That's frustrating as a ball carrier. You know, when you're getting hit by everyone on the defense, you know, that kind of slows you down a little bit, makes you think a little bit more about, you know, all right, do I need to go in here or my route running or stuff like that. That's going to do it for the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Connecticut Sausage. Thanks to our guests, former Tiger players Randy Campbell, Rashawn Frost, Gerard Powers, and Chandler Wooten, along with author er, Mike Jernigan. Now stay tuned for the Outdoor Alabama Countdown to Kickoff, featuring more matchup analysis, the SEC report, starting lineups, interviews with Brian Harson, coordinators and players, and more ahead of tonight's game against Mercer. For Andy Burcham, Ronnie Brown, Jason Campbell, Brad Law, and Stan White, I'm Britt Bowen. Thanks for listening to the Tiger Tailgate Show. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Take it to the house this football season with the Alabama Manufactured Housing Association and the Auburn Tigers. If Auburn returns its first received kickoff in the second half for a touchdown at one of its home SEC games, one lucky fan will win a $75,000 down payment towards the purchase of a manufactured home from an authorized AMHA dealer. Don't miss your chance to take it to the house this season and win a beautiful manufactured home. Register today at auburntigers.com slash take it to the house. Certain terms and conditions may apply. For a complete set of contest rules, visit auburntigers.com slash take it to the house. All right, everyone, let's hit the road. Mom, who's this? Oh, that's Michelle. She's our alpha agent. She helped me file that auto claim fast after that accident last week, so I figured we'd bring her with us. Breakfast burrito? All right, 200 miles before we stop. I hope you've all used the bathroom. Michelle, you good? Before a little thing becomes a big thing, call your alpha agent. This is a two-minute drill on the Tiger Tailgate Show, presented by Kaneka Sausage. This two-minute drill, Auburn Sports Network is partnering with Alabama Gulf Seafood. There is 53 miles of beautiful coastline along Alabama's Gulf Coast. 30 million pounds of fresh Alabama Gulf Seafood are caught each year. Tremendous economic impact of $449 million. Bringing us Alabama Gulf Seafood today is Scott Simpson from the depot. Scott, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today, Britt? I'm doing well, man. Well, what you bring is you have a, a beautiful looking spread here. Well, let me hand you over one while you're, you're asking me questions <laughs> in case you get hungry there. Uh, what I brought today is a shrimp ceviche. So I worked, uh, I, what we do at the Depot restaurant is we really feature Gulf Coastal Cuisine with a worldly flair. And this is an example. I worked as a chef and lived in Ecuador uh, for several years. And they have something called ceviche that they make down there. And oddly enough, 
it's uh, well known that the it's kind of like almost like a hangover cure and the juices from the ceviche are called leche de tigre that means milk of the tiger and so I thought today it'd be appropriate for me to make you this dish this authentic ceviche prepared with delicious uh, Alabama Gulf uh, shrimp I'm just mad that I have 50 seconds to more to talk, so I can't eat it right now. So, again, you, you've had some of the best seafood from around the world. Tell me, where does Alabama Gulf Seafood stack up in, in all the meals that, that you prepare at the depot? I feature it every day. To me, that's a number one goal for me is to showcase the amazing bounty of the Alabama Gulf. And uh, I'm proud that uh, I did win uh, Chef of the Year for Alabama and also got to represent Alabama State uh, in the National Seafood Cook Cookoff. Scott, thank you for joining us. Spectacular spread here. Going to have a bite here in Please just do. a minute. Please do. Come see us at the depot, Britt. Coming up, the Outdoor Alabama Countdown, the kickoff for Auburn and Mercer. We go to the stadium next. Stay with us. This is the Auburn Sports Network. Clumsily. That is until they spot the yellow tag on a stack of yellow wood brand pressure treated pine. 